Ranking and reviewing older Disney films is something I've been wanting to do for a while, since I think doing so will make for a bunch of fun, educational videos and will give me something new to binge. But I've been hesitant to do so, because it honestly just wouldn't seem right for me to dive headfirst into these films that quite clearly have some very harmful depictions of real cultures, even if I were to mention it as a side comment. There's a lot of clashing opinions, controversial topics, and just overall misinformation about this discussion that I feel warrants an entire video to talk about. Needless to say, this is going to be a little more serious than my previous videos, so please, if any of these topics are triggering to you, the last thing I want to do is make anyone feel uncomfortable, so please proceed with caution. Walt Disney Animation Studios have been making films since 1937, a completely different period of American history that we're in now. It was a time before the general public was more conscious of other cultures, and marginalized groups could only dream of being properly represented in Hollywood. Mostly because many well-established and factually proven to be harmful stereotypes of these cultures were substituted with proper representation. Before we get into the bad stuff that Disney has done, it's worth acknowledging that yes, this was not just a problem with Disney, but because of the continued prevalence of these films in popular culture, it is worth criticizing what they did. Some depictions Disney had were pretty blatantly racist, like having a black centaur be the servant in Fantasia, but no one is arguing that there's no problem with this. Because this is blatantly in your face screaming racism. Other depictions rely on caricatures or stereotypes that on the surface surface may not seem harmful, but their implications have consequences that we can trace back through history while also just being very inaccurate and childish. And I bring this up because I totally get how someone who has absolutely no knowledge of racist stereotypes or any accurate knowledge on the cultures being depicted in Disney films can try to argue that none of what they're doing is racist because it's simply their interpretation of a culture, and unless they're being blatantly in your face racist, it's not racism. And that's why I'm going to explain to you how the implications of these depictions have caused harm throughout history and the present. Here we go, this is your final warning, we're about to get into some really effed up stuff. According to sociologist Stuart Hall, essentializing is the process of taking a culture or race, picking a few features of said culture or race, and applying it to your character with the implication that everyone of this race must have these features. For African Americans, this would include having them act rowdy, obnoxious, and talk in exaggerated slang, among many other things. At the very end of Dumbo, we see a perfect example of essentializing when Dumbo meets these crow characters who talk in slang, act rowdy, and obnoxious and even perform a jazz bit. And this isn't even to mention that one of the names of these characters is Jim Crow because I guess that was considered comedy back in the 40s. The Washington Post and Disney themselves have described this scene as, quote, the vocal equivalence of blackface. On top of having the implication that this is how all African Americans acted, it also contained a very subtle hint of the stereotype naturalization, which implied that African Americans or any oppressed group was more closely related to nature than civilized humanity. This implication is more prominent in The Jungle Book when Mowgli is kidnapped by King Louis, who exhibits a lot of the essentialist properties of African Americans. King Louis is very determined to obtain all the characteristics that make a man a man, and kind of makes the implication that African Americans can't be civilized and are more closely related to nature and monkeys, which is incredibly racist. Ferris State University's online Jim Crow Museum hypothesizes that this could have been Walt Disney's commentary to the civil rights movement happening at the same time of the film's production and release. And whether this was intentional or not, it still doesn't have a great look considering that fact. Peter Pan features some pretty blatant appropriation of native cultures by simplifying their appearance down to this. On top of that, the white characters are dressed in headdresses, which to many natives is offensive because it completely undermines any cultural or spiritual significance headdresses have. It takes on the implication of othering them, that is, portraying them as other than the civilized white race, by portraying them as not civilized and limiting the dialogue of the chief in broken English. Also, just the whole idea of finding this tribe in Neverland kinda implies that there's some exotic creatures that Peter and the gang just ran into, like the mermaids they saw earlier earlier on the island. Lady and the Tramp and the Aristocats feature Siamese cats that are quite clearly essentialist characters of Asian people with their slanted eyes, buck teeth, exaggerated accent, and the fact that the Aristocat Siamese cat holds chopsticks and says egg foo young and fortune cookie. And again, none of this is blatantly screaming Asian people are inferior, but think about what it must have been like for Asian kids watching this movie to finally see an Asian character on screen only for them to say fortune cookie always wrong. It kinda implies that all of Asian culture 
boils down to egg foo young fortune cookie and chopsticks, which is pretty messed up. On top of this, in Lady and the Tramp, the Siamese twins sort of play on the yellow peril stereotype. That being the immense fear of Asians entering the country because they were considered, quote, untrustworthy, since the only purpose of these characters in the movie is to make a mess of the house and then blame Lady for it. Aladdin originally had a very controversial lyric in the song Arabian Nights that had the implication that Arabs were dangerous and scary. The lyric was, they'll cut off your ear if they don't like your face, it's barbaric, but hey, it's home. The lyric was changed soon after the movie came out, after the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee voiced their concerns, but for whatever reason, Disney still kept the barbaric part. In a time like the 90s, where Saddam Hussein to Americans was the only representation they wanted to associate Arabs to, it really wasn't helpful adding a lyric to the movie that likened Arabs to barbaric, especially considering Americans started to really believe this a decade later after 9-11. And finally, Pocahontas and Song of the South have a bit of a different approach to all of this. They portray two pivotal parts of American history, those being the Reconstruction Era and the deadly colonization of Native America in a very lighthearted and happy kind of way that holds the implication of, hey look, America was never all that violent or deadly or racist, it was all happy rainbows and zippity doodahs and love wins over English colonization. And yes, I get that these movies are targeted towards children, and it would probably be pretty inappropriate to show lynchings in Song of the South or the enslavement and murder of Pocahontas' tribe in Pocahontas. But when you switch up history and try to portray it as this big, fun, happy festival where the world is and always has been perfect, it can lead to some very inaccurate ideas of how history played out and undermine the very deadly history this country has. And that's all the 20th century Walt Disney animation cultural appropriation I'm going to go over in this video. There's definitely more examples in other spheres of Disney and just media in general, but I'm just going to stick to that. One possible theory for why all of this happened, besides just being like, Disney must have been racist, or Disney was just copying the trends of the time, has to do with the entire concept of Disneyfication, which as Webster Dictionary defines it is, the transformation of something into a carefully controlled and safe environment. Snow White, Pinocchio, Sleeping Beauty, and all older Disney movies were adaptations of existing fairy tales. And even though a movie like Pinocchio can seem very dark to us now, the source material it was based on was even more scary, dark, and non-kid friendly than the Disney film. But the whole point of Disney movies was to take these fairy tales and simplify them down to the T and add some fun magic and hocus pocus here and there to make it more accessible to a younger audience. And that works perfectly fine, and it's not at all controversial or harmful when that logic is only applied to things like fairy tales. But when you apply that logic to actual cultures of real people, that's when you get cultural appropriation. That's when you start to lean on existing stereotypes as a way of simplifying something down into an easily understandable to the wide audience package. But that's just one theory of how or why all of this happens. Either way, I think the bottom line of all of this content is that even if all of this was just some giant misunderstanding from a large number of people working at Disney, that still doesn't excuse the fact that these depictions are racist and can be proven as racist with historical definitions and examples of racism in cultural appropriation. And all of this has proven to decrease the self-esteem of minority groups, but increase the self-esteem of white males who get their sense of power validated by what they're seeing on screen. Again, this is all on average. This is not every white male is going to feel validated and every minority is going to feel unvalidated. And look, I don't bring this up to be like, oh, you're white, so you won't understand what they're going through. But more so, I want to open the door for people who may not have considered what others are thinking to think more open-mindedly. Maybe the Siamese cats in Lady and the Tramp were funny and not at all racist to you, but for an Asian person, there's many reasons that it was. That doesn't make them a, quote, liberal snowflake. It is perfectly logical to be upset at constant attacks of your racial identity, reinforcing the idea that you aren't normal or you must act a certain way because your race does. And I promise you, nobody is saying that you are a racist bigot if you like these movies. There is obviously more worth to these movies than the racist implications they have. And Disney knows this, that's why they're keeping them up on Disney+. Plus. Oh, also, they kind of have a financial incentive to keep them up, but let's not worry about that. The Aristocats is an underrated childhood classic for me, and Aladdin is one of the best Disney movies ever, in my opinion, for reasons that have nothing to do with the racist implications those movies have. But I completely understand how these movies got their racist implications, and I'm not going to pretend like they don't exist in order to protect these movies from any criticism because I like them. All I ask is that just for a moment, step outside of your comfort zone and try listening to people who may have a different perspective about these movies. Okay, but this was all pertaining to films in the 20th century. There's been nearly three decades since the latest movie I referenced earlier. Has Disney gotten better recently? Well, short answer, yes, but long answer, it's complicated. There's been a shift when it comes to cultural appropriation with Disney from being in the way they are represented to the question of if they are represented and how commodification plays into everything. And since Disney will forever be money hungry, it's not a surprise that things don't look as great as they could look. In 
2017, Disney tried to trademark El Dia de los Muertos because of Coco, which is just crazy. Like, imagine celebrating a holiday every year of your life, and then one day the American company Disney comes along and says, well, this looks like an opportunity for some money. I'm just gonna trademark this cultural holiday. And despite how they may seem to present themselves, it's quite clear that whether intentional or not, they can still mess up the representation of a movie pretty badly. And all it takes is a bunch of people from said culture to dissect the movie to figure that out. At this point, I'm sure a lot of people have seen this video, but I'd recommend checking out Shirin J. Zhao's videos about Raya and the Last Dragon, a movie that only came out a year ago. The conversation, though, has shifted from representation of races of people to sexualities and gender identities. It's the thing Disney's been in the news for recently. I really don't have the energy in me to explain the entire situation start to finish because it's exhausted me for the past three months. But basically what happened is Disney was kind of hesitant in opposing this Florida bill regarding the teachings of gender identity and sexual orientation in elementary school. Disney specifically was being targeted because of their financial contributions to the politicians who created this bill. Disney eventually did oppose the bill and even said they were going to work to repeal it once it was signed into law, which pissed off Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and began a legal battle between Disney and Florida over the special Reedy Creek taxing district that Walt Disney World is in, so yeah, it's just a giant mess. What I want to focus on is that when Disney first released their rather lackluster response to this bill, they stated, quote, the biggest impact we can have as it pertains to LGBT rights is through the inspiring content we produce, which pissed off Pixar specifically, who kind of said what everyone was thinking when they released this statement and what everyone has been thinking for the past decade in general. Hey, Disney, you aren't making any good representation because you're scared of getting banned in China and losing out on the profits there. You aren't making any inspiring content to help this problem. In their open letter, Pixar, who has attempted to include LGBT representation in their films for years now, stated that they aren't being allowed to by Disney executives. They specifically stated, quote, even if LGBTQIA plus content was the answer to fixing the discriminatory legislation in the world, we are being barred from creating it. Damn, mic drop. But what happened in response is that Bob Chapek is actually allowing Pixar to include a lesbian kiss in Lightyear that was previously censored by Disney executives. They're also going to be putting Love, Victor on Disney Plus after it was banished to Hulu because it was considered to be, quote, too mature for Disney. This whole situation kind of exposed a big problem that Disney has had for decades with regarding LGBT representation. And I genuinely think that if Chapek is true to his word, this problem will be solved. And I'm sure there's going to be pushback, not just from people and your grandma's favorite news organization, but from higher ups in the company, just as there was when they were making Black Panther according to Bob Iger's autobiography. There were a lot of people saying that there was no way a nearly all black cast was going to fly well for white audiences. And guess what? Black Panther is not only one of the highest grossing films of all time, but is regarded as one of the best Marvel films by a lot of people. So to finally answer the question, yes, I do think Disney has gotten significantly better with regards to cultural representation. And I think we're currently in a transition period that is going to open up a plethora of meaningful, accurate representation for not just Disney, but mainstream film in general. There's for sure going to be a lot of pushback, but if Disney is true to their word of wanting to quote, not only uplift and inspire, but also consciously, purposefully, and relentlessly champion the spectrum of voices and perspectives in our world, they won't be affected by any of it. I definitely don't have much credentials to talk about this stuff, so I recommend checking the description where I've linked all the sources that I used to research this video. And please, for the love of everything good, keep the comment section civil. Disagreeing is okay, but please save your death threats and insults for something that isn't the YouTube comment section. It feels kind of shameless to say this at the end of a video like this, but if you enjoy Disney movies, there's a lot more lighthearted content on my channel that you can check out. Now that I've done this video, I plan on reviewing older Disney films in the future. See you guys in the next one.